So opinion two says that the action is evil and haram and bid'ah and munkar and the stepping stone to shirk, but it is not necessarily shirk in and of itself. And if a person has a particular aqidah or belief about the one they are calling, then it becomes shirk. And if they have another aqidah or belief, then it is haram, but it does not become uh, in and of itself uh, shirk. I myself am now an advocate of this second uh, position. I used to be 1B, and now I am uh, uh, very staunchly in opinion uh, 2. Um, Prena uh, a renowned da'i in the US who says that asking intercession from um, dead people or from graves is not a shirk by itself, yet it is a means of shirk and that it would um, uh, be prohibited haram, but it is not shirk. Unless the person who's asking for such intercession has the intention to call them as gods. So what is the ruling on that? First of all, do not take knowledge from the likes of me or the likes of him. Take knowledge from real scholars. This quote unquote renowned scholar, he's a da'i. He does not qualify to be a scholar. He's a student of knowledge. So there are so many of us. We are fortunate to be famous because Allah has blessed us with this gift. I'm telling you this, when you want to take knowledge, proper knowledge, especially when it comes to aqidah, <laughs> don't go to Tom, Dick and Harry. Don't go to people who keeps, keep on switching in the, uh, uh, so those who adopt for all, most of their life a particular opinion, then they change to a second opinion. Well, give them some time and they will change to a third opinion. Are these people worthy of being followed in matters of aqidah? Definitely not. Now, Mehwish says that, he says that it's permissible. I doubt he says it's permissible. I would suggest or presume that he said it is not shirk, but it is prohibited. Because if he says that it is permissible, then he would have gone to the dark side, which is the super Sufis who believe and worship truly the graved people. But he thinks that it's a sinful thing, but it's not shirk. And why would someone say that? Nowadays, we are in an era where people compromise their religion. So in order to gather as many people around us and to gather as many followers, being a tolerant person, advocating of tolerance, being okay with all strands of the society, they compromise their own religion. So they try to walk a very thin line. And they say, we cannot label people as mushrik because there's so many of them. Well, Allah Azza wa labeled them in the Quran when he said, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مشركون. The vast majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth, would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Are you serious? Yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, that Allah is the giver of life and death, that Allah is the creator, that Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. It's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so-and-so different with scholars so-and-so. Go to the sources. The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. This is their belief, but associated others with him. Through invoking them. And nowhere in the Quran, if you read it from cover to cover, that you will find a distinction or segregation between when you make dua to someone who's dead, 
thinking that he is capable or not capable of your intention. Dua is dua. Allah says in many places that they invoke others than Allah. He did not call them gods in these ayahs. Allah says clearly that they invoke other than Allah and they don't have any benefit for them or can protect them from any evil. And on the day of judgment, they will distance themselves from their shirk. So invoking is considered to be shirk on the day of judgment. And this is what the Prophet said, al-ibada. Invoking, making dua is worship, not a form of worship, no is worship. This is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. So if you go to the disbelievers, to the idol worshippers, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, none of them would say to you that I am worshipping this idol because I believe that it creates, it gives life and takes it. I believe it facilitates my affairs. I believe rain comes through it. Nobody says this. They know that only Allah does this. And this is Tawheed al rububiyyah so for this so-called quote-unquote scholar to come and claim that when I go to Tijani or Jilani or Sidna al-Badawi or to Al-Hussein or to the Prophet himself and I make dua to them that I don't believe in them to be gods, this is exactly what the idol worshippers used to do. Allah says in the beginning of Surah Zumar that we do not worship them except so that they would get us closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why are you calling al Hussein to help you? Because he can call Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is the identical shirk that the idol worshippers used to do. And if you say, no, 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 Sheikh, you are judging their intention. Excuse me? Why is this person invoking al Hussein or Tijani or al Jilani or al Badawi, the dead? The grave, why, do, why are they going to Darga and sacrificing to them and lighting lights and candles? Why are they making tawaf? Why are they asking them? Isn't this worshipping them? Or do they have to prostrate so that you can say, oh, no, this is worshipping. This is why I say, do not, and I repeat, do not take knowledge from such people. These people who keep on changing their colors according to the highest bidder. So if they're in America, they say what the Americans want to say, uh, to hear. If they go to Europe, if, go, if they go to Africa, they will be the same thing. Whatever draws followers and likes and gives them fame. So their intention is with Allah. But you as a Muslim, you should depend on the Quran. And you should ask trusted scholars of Aqeedah if you want to be saved on the day of judgment and Allah knows best.